Um, good morning, everybody. I'm really glad that you joined us today. I'm Luciana Blanchard. I'm a cloud solutions architect in the Global Partner Solutions team here in the UK in Microsoft. And my focus is identity and my role to help partners build a security practice. Um, I'm going to expand on what Pete presented about zero trust, but I'm going to have a focus on identities. So our reality has changed. There has been a significant shift in security. The global pandemic, it made remote work in the norm for many organizations across the globe, and it's becoming a higher incentive. If you don't offer flexible work to your employees, you just can't get them to come and work for your company anymore because now employees are starting to demand that flexible work. And based on one of our surveys that Microsoft did, we know that 41% of employees for large companies around the world, they are looking for the opportunity to move jobs right now. And one of the biggest things that is going to motivate them to do this is can they get a lifestyle and work style that work together and that really meet their needs? Can they get that work-life balance to support their well-being and their family commitments? So this is a, a critical thing that all employers are having to deal with at the moment. We've got many organizations that now need to support permanent hybrid working models where secure access from outside your network is critical. And as employees transition to these new working models, they're bringing more devices, which means there will be an increase in your endpoint diversity. And this makes visibility and threat detection and response across multiple platforms and clouds even more challenging. So our traditional perimeter based network and security models, they just can't adapt. We need a whole new model and that's what Zero Trust is all about. So the idea of the network perimeter where you get to the office and you can only access resources within that perimeter, that doesn't really exist anymore because you see more cloud adoption, we see more mobile usage, more remote employees, more contractors and partners. And all these people, they need access to your infrastructure, they need access to your applications, your APIs, and they need this access from outside of that perimeter. And just strengthening that old security perimeter, it doesn't really work because we can't just assume trust once you are in a network. A network is not necessarily the right place to say now I trust this person. So if you are removing trust from the network, then we need to put it somewhere else. And if you look at how employees, partners and contractors access your resources, the idea here is that identity is the new perimeter because they are the ones that you want to manage and control access to your resources. And the most effective way of doing that is, is shifting controls from your network layer to your application layer. Because now we have a better idea of who the user is, what device they're on, what location they're coming from. So we can make much smarter decisions at the application layer. And organizations can utilize these identity signals as part of their access control decisions on when to grant access, when to deny access, and when to step up another additional factor in the authentication flow. And that's where zero trust principles come into play. So zero trust is a set of security principles, as Pete mentioned. And the first principle is it, that it defines is verify explicitly. And that means always authenticate and authorize based on all available data points. And that includes your identity, your location, your device health, data classification and any anomalies. And also verify continuously. So not only during the initial login, but frequently during the user session. Every time that identity token gets refreshed and, and any time that the security posture has changed. The second principle is use least privilege access. So always adopt a least privilege approach. Just because I'm inside your corporate network, it does not mean that I can get access to everything. I should only have access to get to the small number of applications that I need to to get my work done. So don't give your users free access. And for very sensitive applications, you should enforce multi-factor authentication and make sure that the user is on a very well managed secure device, that you know it's in a good shape, is compliant with your company policies before you allow access to your privileged resources. And lastly, we should always assume breach. As good as our security is, we've got to assume that eventually an attacker will get in 
and you need to have multiple layers of defense and you need great monitoring and remediation in place so you can quickly figure out what's going on and take action. So the idea here is to minimize your blast radius by employing security strategies to prevent that lateral movement. So these are the pillars of our zero trust strategy. Microsoft security solutions can really help you through each one of these pillars to really improve your security posture. A zero trust approach, it should really extend throughout your entire digital state and it should serve as a philosophy and an end to end strategy. So today we're going to focus on identities and identities. They can represent people, they can represent services, IoT devices. And when an identity attempts to access a resource, we need to verify that identity with strong authentication. We need to ensure that access is compliant and that is typical for that identity. So we need to ensure that the access request is not unusual and we need to check for any anomalies. And we need to follow the least privileged access principles. So how can we do that? 